Today I'm going to show you how to set up your development environment to compile MapBin GIS and MapWindow 5. I've created a new virtual machine with these settings, just a simple Windows 10. First we're going to need to download some software. We need a Git client. I prefer the Atlassian software. Go to sourcetreeapp.com, download the free copy of Sourcetree and run the install. Next start Sourcetree and start cloning the source code. First we need to get the GitHub URL. Go to the window. GitHub. And we start with the map pin GIS. Here you have the GitHub URL. Copy it. Click new. Paste it in. Now I prefer to install it on a dev folder. Advanced options. Check the develop branch. And now, oh, now all the source code will be downloaded. This might take a while. We'll come back when it is finished. The source code is now downloaded. You can see here the last updates. Now it's time to download some additional libraries. Go to GIS internals.com to get the GDAL libraries which are used in WebWinGIS. You can use the stable releases. I prefer the development releases. On this side you can see the different compilers that were used to create the binaries. Pick the version you will use for compiling MapWinGIS. It's better to match them so we get the version for Visual Studio 2013. Download this zip which holds the binaries and download the this zip which holds the libraries and headers. Okay. The zips are downloaded. Now we go to our C drive, our dev folder, and here we have MapWinGIS. Then we go to the support folder, the GDAL SDK folder, and this is for the Visual Studio 2013 files. Here we have the bin folder, and we've downloaded the Win32 binaries, and we go and copy them. These are the binaries bin file and you just select all and copy them. The same we do for the library files. Select all and copy. Header files. Select all, copy. Okay, now we can delete these files. Because we are using the Visual Studio 2013 binaries from GDAL, we also need to use Visual Studio 2013 for WebNGIS. This is the 2015 version of some MapWinGIS and it will be the 2013 version. Download it, run it, and then finish the installer. Now start Visual Studio 2013 as an administrator. Right click, more, run as administrator. Now go to Open Project, go to your F folder, Magnesia Source, and open the solution. Here you can see all the classes and stuff. 
first time compile it in the release mode because it will copy the necessary GDAL address. Because the OCX is registered, Visual Studio needs to be run as administrator. Rebuild solution. When you get this error, means you're missing the multibyte MFC library. You need to download it. Close Visual Studio. Go to the multibyte library. The full link will be in the description. Hit the download button. Run it. Now we can start Visual Studio again. Open the project and build again. And this is what we want to see. Success. We can check this by closing the solution and opening another solution, which is a .NET solution. This solution we use to create the interrupt DLLs, which are needed in any .NET project, and we also use it for some quick testing. First we try to build it, and this one is success as well, and now we can run it, and here we can see the map.js map control. No files are loaded, but we now know it's working. Now you have the latest version of MapWin.js. Now let's continue with building MapWindow 5. Go to Source Tree and back to the Explorer, GitHub. Now we go to the map in the 5, get the clone URL, copy it, and say again, clone new, and again we will see that. Advanced options, again develop branch, and Hit close. And again, the first time it will take some time. And now we see the changes and source code for Map Window 5. Map Window 5, we can use Visual Studio 2015 if you like, or stick with Visual Studio 2013. I prefer the Visual Studio 2015 version, so let's download that as well. Go back to download the community, install it, run it, and we'll come back. Visual Studio 2015 is installed. Now we can run it. We don't need to run it as an administrator. To show the distinction, I use the dark theme for Visual Studio 2015. Now open project, go to C Dev, number 5, source. Solution file. Solution is fully loaded. You can see all the projects. We use several dependency injection options. Castle is a default one. The plugins are in a separate folder. Here you can see the debug window plugin and all the other ones. In a later screencast, I will show you how to create your own plugin. Let's go to the first project and check if all the references are available. As you can see, we are missing the Syncfusion binaries. We use Syncfusion for our forms. We also miss some system references, but when we update our NuGet packages, they will come back. So, first we need to go to Syncfusion. Syncfusion has a community edition now as well.
claim your free license and download the Windows form install. You don't need to essential suite, you can do so if you like. Okay, the download is finished, run the install, fill in your project key and continue with the install. Okay, the install seems good. We can remove these two. No need them. And we can go back to Visual Studio. And now we can open that in the file. Okay, the solution is loaded. What is really cool in Visual Studio 2015, you will see here what Git repo and branch you are in. Now restore the Nugget packages. Okay, the Nugget packages are restored. And we can go to first time release. And because we just compiled MapBinGIS in 32 bit, we need to compile MapBinner 5 in 32 bit as well because we don't have the 64 bit version of MapBinGIS. And now we can compile. Okay, it's finished. This is the line we are looking for. All succeeded. Let's go back to some of the messages. You will see some of these .NET warnings. You will look at them in the near future, but you will also see a lot of these warnings. These warnings are about MapInJS and they are harmless. We've had them for years now. To be honest, we don't really know how to solve these, but you can skip them as well. This is an important stage. This is where the MapInJS binaries are copied to MapWindow 5. The copying of these files is handled here. Just a simple batch file. You have two versions, one for the 32-bit versions and one for the 64 versions. When we open it, as you can see, it's going to the folder where the MapWinGS binaries are located. This environment variable is set during the compilation of MapWinGS and points to the bin folder. We can check. And here you can see location of the bin folder for MapBinGIS. And when we go to there, yes, MapBinGIS. Here you have all the GDAL binaries and MapBinGIS itself. So all these files are copied to. Release MapBinGS folder, as you can see here. And the post build executable, which is called afterwards, is creating the manifest files. The manifest file tells the executable, MapWindow executable, where the MapBinGS OCX is located. By using the manifest file, it is no longer needed to register the OCX on the client. When we now compile in debug mode, And again, in debug mode, all was success. We can run MapWindow 5 in debug mode because we previously registered the OCX. In debug mode, the OCX is not copied. This file is not run in debug mode, but because the OCX is registered, MapWindow 5 can still find the OCX. Now we can start. Oh, we get an error meaning I've got the wrong project, in other words, here it is. Set the starter and run again. Okay, now we can start working the file.
and here we can see everything is working. Coloring, here as well, labels, zooming, background is OpenStreetMap, we can change it here. We can change to Bing Maps, but then we need an API key. And we can do the quest area. Oh, there's no longer support. That's new. So we can remove that one. Recycle map. And we can go to sleep there. Okay. If we want, we can add lakes, rivers, roads. Okay, we have some debug issues here, we need to investigate. Okay, so the debugging is working. So, everything is working, we can go to the UEs, or okay. we can now start changing. Updating, making changes. If you need some inspiration about what to change, you can go to our issue tracker, and here you can. You have several projects. You have the MapWindow Core, it's also MapWindow 5, MapWindow Toolbox, and a special one for MapWind GIS. For this project, you need, of course, good E++ programming skills. For the other project, you need C Sharp skills. You can pick an issue you want to work on. If you are really intending to participate in the project, you can send me an email and I will give you access to this issue tracker so you can assign issues on your own name. And the last project is the toolbox. These are mostly new tools which need to be created. So this was the video about how to set up a development environment for WebWindows GIS and WebWindows 5.